Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, Isaiah 58 through 63. If you remember yesterday, we were looking at uh, a lot of different stuff, but redemption for Zion, the invitation to those who are thirsty. Uh, we looked at the suffering servant and everything that he is going to accomplish and what that means or meant or means to come, depending on how you read that. Uh, and then also uh, we looked at the judgment of the world. Now today we are looking at themes of fasting, sin, confession, and then uh, also redemption. Beyond that, we're going to look at the glory of Zion, the year of the Lord's favor, uh, Zion's new name, we'll talk about that briefly, uh, and then the day of vengeance and uh, redemption. So God's day of redemption and vengeance. And then finally, uh, praise and prayer. What a great way to end it out. So again, uh, Isaiah 58 through 63 today. So chapter 58. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. You exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast that I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the yoke or untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke is not is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and not turn away from your own flesh and blood then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spread yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your foot from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Chapter 59 Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds. And acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight among the strong. We are like the dead. 
We all growl, like bears. We moan mournfully, like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, fomenting oppression and revolt, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth is humbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was none, and he was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. According to what they have done, so will they repay wrath to his enemies and retrib retribution to his foes. For he will repay the islands there due. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord. And from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come up like a tent or like a pent up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I've put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord. Chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover, cover over your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all of Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kedar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you and they will be accepted as offerings on my altar and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along the clouds like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me in the in the lead they are ships of Tarshish in the lead they are ships of Tarshish, bringing your sons from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has crowned you with splendor. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you, though in anger I struck you in favor, I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open, they will never be shut day or night, so that men may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine and the fir and the cypress together, to adorn the palace of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. The songs of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord. Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Although you had been forsaken and hated, no one uh, with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold, and instead of silver, er, and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory." Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then will all your people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the works of my hands, for the display of my splendor. 
the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest and mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. Chapter 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to confront or to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will, destroy, or will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and every everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make them everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who have seen them will acknowledge that they are a people that the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a jewel, or as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Chapter 62. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all your kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call to you deserted or your name or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah and your land, Belua. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over this bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem, and make her the praise of the earth. The Lord is sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. Never again will I give you grain as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made a proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. Chapter 63. Who is this coming from Edom, from Basra, with his garments stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forth in the greatness of his strength? It is I, speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone. From the nations, no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and I stained my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and the year of my redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I looked uh, or I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm worked salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. Uh, I will tell of the kindness of the Lord. 
the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people, where, uh, where he is, where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who sent his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters right before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in open country, they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down to the plain, they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people, to make your for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from your lofty throne, holy and glorious. Where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are our father through Abraham. Or excuse me, though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your inheritance. For a little while, your people possessed your holy place, but now our enemies have trampled down your sanctuary. We are yours from of old, but you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. So I think one of my favorite parts of that is 62 verse 4. 62 verse 4, no longer will they call you deserted or your name called, uh, or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah. Hephzibah is my delight is in her, uh, and your land, Belua, and Belua means married, um, for the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. I think that's so cool. It's so important to recognize that that's a new identity, and that's exactly what God gives us is a new identity. So when reading that, that shouldn't shock us that that there is a new identity that God can grant. Yes, we have been born on this sinful, fallen world as sinful fallen people, and yet God can give us a new identity through Christ. And I think that's, again, it's it's easy to forget that we have a new identity, but definitely worth praying and praising about. So let's do it. Lord, we thank you for the new identity we can have in you, not because of ourselves, but because of Christ and his faithfulness. Lord, we thank you so, so much for it. You are so good and holy and just. Help us to recognize that we are yours, that that is our true identity, and not to forget, Lord. We thank you for all these things. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that is about all I have for you today. As always, know that I appreciate you. Wife, appreciate you tons. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.